Hello, everybody. This is Dr. Ed Mazza for Meaning of Catholic. Jesus Christ is King. I want to share with you an announcement for my upcoming Advent course. It's called Apocalypse Now, The Third Secret of Fatima. We're going to start on the first Sunday of Advent. We're going to be at six o'clock Pacific time. And for those of you who cannot join us uh, live, you are, well, if you enroll, we will be sending you the video link so you can watch at your leisure. So I'd like to invite you all to go to edmundmaza.com and enroll in Apocalypse Now, the third secret of Fatima. What we're going to do for the next few minutes or so is give you an overview of what I will be sharing with you. You know, the event at Fatima in 1917 was the most important event, arguably, of the 20th century, especially for the Catholic Church. And the third part of the secret has, of course, been veiled in mystery since the beginning. It was supposed to be revealed in 1960. I remember my mother, uh, who was a, a teenager when the movie Miracle of Our Lady of Fatima uh, appeared. Yes, there was a time when Hollywood actually made movies about Fatima. Uh, she was a, a young adult in 1960 when the third secret was supposed to be revealed. The whole Catholic world was waiting for what that contents of the third secret was. And uh, my mother told me that uh, somebody told her a, a rather blasphemous joke. They said, Mary, Mary, they just released the third secret. Did you hear, did you hear? And she said, what, 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 what is it? And they said, oh, it was the bill for the last supper. So you uh, you had people, you know, mocking the church because Pope John the Twenty Third refused to release the third secret. Well, he, you know, John the Twenty Third is also famous for starting out the Second Vatican Council on the feast of Mary's uh, divine maternity, no less, in his opening address by saying. We don't want to listen to the prophets of doom and gloom. Well, scripture says, and I believe that that was a reference to the children of, of Fatima and to Sister Lucia. There is speculation, of course, lots of speculation. We're going to sort through the fact and the fiction about the third secret, but there is speculation that the third secret may, in fact, contain a reference to Pope John's council, which is why he perhaps did not want to reveal that in 1960. But be that as it may, Advent is a time when we reflect on the last things that were prophesied by our Lord and Savior. It's a time when we listen to the herald John the, the Baptist, St. John the Baptist. And also in our own time, we need to be listening to the prophetic voice of the mother of God. One of the things that I'm going to be teaching in this course is that there are theologians who argue that Fatima is not merely private revelation, that there is another category between the public revelation of the gospel and the private revelations that many of the saints and holy people have been uh, privileged to experience. In fact, I'd like to share with you right now a quote from John Paul the Great from the speech that he gave exactly 40 years ago when he went to Fatima 
in order to thank Our Lady for saving his life. That's right, the Fatima message was very personal for John Paul. On May 13, 1981, Mehmed Ali Aja's bullets pierced the Holy Father's chest. He lost most of his blood and almost died. And if he hadn't bent over in St. Peter's Square on his Pope mobile, if he hadn't bent over to look at an image of Our Lady of Fatima that a little girl in the crowd had, uh, the, the bullet would have found its mark. That bullet was put into the crown of the statue of Our Lady of Fatima at the Basilica in Portugal. So in June of uh, 1982, John Paul came to Fatima to thank Our Lady, excuse me, May 13th, one year to the day, 1982. And he says, and so I come here today because on this very day last year in St. Peter's Square in Rome, the attempt on the Pope's life was made in mysterious coincidence with the anniversary of the first apparition at Fatima, which occurred on the 13th of May, 1917. I seem to recognize in the coincidence of the dates, a special call to come to this place. And so today I am here. I have come in order to thank divine providence in this place, which the mother of God seems to have chosen in a particular way. And the Holy Father goes on to say, the message of Fatima is, in its basic nucleus, a call to conversion and repentance, as in the gospel. This call was uttered at the beginning of the 20th century, and it was thus addressed particularly to this present century. The lady of the message seems to have read with special insight the quote-unquote signs of the times, the signs of our times. On the traditional calendar on the first Sunday of Advent, I'd like to read for you the, from the Gospel. From Luke's Gospel, chapter 21, verses, well, we'll start with verse 25. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, There shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth distress of nations by reason of the confusion of the roaring of the sea and of the waves men withering away for fear and expectations of what shall come upon the whole world. Well, in 1917, there was a sign in the sun. 70,000 people witnessed it, October 13th, 1917, including fake news, Freemasons. But they all saw something supernatural. The sun, apparently dancing around the sky, giving off shafts of different multicolored light, only to come crashing towards the earth, and then only to resume its place back in the sky again, with everyone who was previously soaked and dirty in mud, dry and clean. So to get back to John Paul's message at Fatima, he says, the lady of the message seems to have read with special insight the signs of the times, the signs of our time. The call to repentance is a motherly one, and at the same time, it is strong and decisive. The love that, quote, rejoices in the truth, unquote, is capable of being clear cut and firm. The call to repentance is linked as always with a call to prayer. The lady of the message indicates the rosary, 
which can rightly be defined as Mary's prayer. The prayer in which she feels particularly united with us, she herself prays with us. Listen very carefully to what Carol Waitiwa says next. The rosary prayer embraces the problems of the church, of the sea of St. Peter. The problems of the whole world. I think, and I'm not alone in this, John Paul was giving us a hint of what is in the message of Fatima, particularly what is in the third secret of Fatima, or the third part of the great secret of Fatima. The problems of the church, of the see of St. Peter, the Pope, the papacy. And John Paul in 1982 was not alone in sharing that with us. Just two short years later, his prefect for the Congregation of the Doctrine of the Faith, Joseph Ratzinger, who went on to become Pope Benedict XVI. In a November interview, November 1984, with Jesus Magazine, Ratzinger was uh, questioned by Vittorio Mezzori. Mezzori asked him, Cardinal Ratzinger, have you read what is called the Third Secret of Fatima, the one that Sister Lucia had sent to Pope John XXIII and which the latter did not wish to make known and consigned to the Vatican archives. Ratzinger answered him, Yes, I have read it. And this frank response provoked a further question. Mitsuri asked him, Why has it not been revealed? Twenty-four years had gone by. Mitsuri wanted to know, Why has it not been revealed? And Ratzinger answers, because according to the judgment of the popes, it adds nothing different to what a Christian must know concerning what derives from revelation. A radical call for conversion, the absolute importance of history, the dangers threatening the faith and the life of the Christian and therefore of the world. So Pope Benedict is at that moment in 1984 was echoing what John Paul II had alluded to in his visit to Fatima in 1982. And as a matter of fact, John Paul at, at Fatima said that the message of Fatima was more relevant and more urgent today than it was in 1917. And he said, can our mother, can she remain silent when the faith of her children, where the faith of her children is concerned? And John Paul answers his own question, no, she cannot remain silent. So, and uh, Benedict finishes his statement to Mezzori by saying, in addition to the dangers threatening the faith and the life of the Christian, and therefore of the world, also the importance of the novissimi, it's Italian for the, the last events at the end of time. That's in the third secret. So the title of our course is Apocalypse Now. 
the third secret of Fatima. Because what our Lord talked about in the Gospels, what God reveals to us from St. John in the book of Revelation, the Apocalypse, it's all connected. And Advent is the time when we should be thinking of our own last end, but also the last events at the end of time. Just as we are looking forward to the coming of Christ at Christmas, we are also looking forward to the coming of Christ the King at the end of days. It's vitally important for the salvation of souls and for the survival of the church in a recognizable form that we get to the bottom of what that third secret is. And I'll leave you with a cliffhanger. Although 22 years ago, in the year 2000, the Vatican released a text of a vision of the third secret, there was no corresponding explanation of that vision from the Virgin as she did with the vision of hell. She not only showed the children a vision, but she explained it to them, even though the vision of hell was quite self-explanatory. So as Mother Angelica said, I don't think we got it all. Once again, I thank you for your time and interest. Let's pray the rosary every day for the church, for the papacy, for the salvation of souls, and for the coming of the Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, come quickly. Thank you all very much. Again, the uh, address to enroll is edmundmaza.com. Uh, just hit the enroll button, and we'll be happy to have you in our class. Third Secret of Fatima. Tell your friends and family not to miss this opportunity. Thank you, and God bless you.